What's up guys and welcome back. Back on the Firebird. I have the Brian Tooley Racing lifters soaking in some mineral spirits right now. So while that's happening, you just gotta let them soak long enough to break up some of that really thick packet grease that they got in there. But I figured while those were soaking in some mineral spirits, we'd try to put this uh, oil pump on and the oil pickup tube back on and maybe even put the uh, oil pan on so i've got the oil pump right here try and finagle it in there which again is probably easier said than done this thing moves in there you got to make sure it's centered and then there's these little teeth <laughs> winning just like so. We have our four bolts here. We'll get these suckers started by hand before we give them any love. Bolt number four going in. We'll give her some clicks. I'm sure these need to be torqued down, so I'll look that up. And we'll get these suckers banged right in here. All my power tools are, well not all of them, but the two that I would use the most on this are in my other garage because I helped my son put a cold air intake on his car. I think that was Wednesday, I think we did that. So now I'm stuck doing this manual labor. I'm almost too old for this. I have carpal tunnel in both wrists. I've had carpal tunnel for well over 20 years. I've never had anything done about it, but I have been formally diagnosed. Okay, these torque to 18 foot-pounds. So let's see if we can get some clicks. Clicks. Now we just want to spin this a couple times to make sure that oil pump is centered. Should be good. That doesn't feel right. That does. Right. 
with this oil pan and pickup tube I bought. It came with all new hardware. I'm sure they all do, but I just wanted to tell you. I'm hoping uh, that at the end of this build, I can create a video uh, that has all the parts that I used make it a little easier for somebody else that's doing this build because I've had to search and search and search and ask and ask and it would just be nice if there was you know a place to go where everything was there that's kind of a sucker to get to you guys got to see this. This is friggin' hilarious. Look at this gasket. All right. I don't know the best way to show you this. Maybe a top-down view. So these line up. I mean, fairly okay. I think once they're on the oil pan, they'll be fine. Check this side out. Uh... What this problem? But if you hold, if you hold this side and tweak this side back, they'll line up. So I think I'm going to try and put it on the oil pan with a couple bolts in it, just to kind of uh, reference it. But <laughs> cheap China shit. Come on, guys, do better. All right, I got the gasket on. I got a few bolts in there to reference it. See if we can Let's see if we can be triumphant. Oil pans on, but it's not fully tightened down yet. I just have it sitting on there, not torqued or anything, because I've got to get this front cover and the back cover on. So, I got a new front seal. So, that goes in there. Let me get you set up here, and I'll hammer that thing home. Something like that. I have some RTV. You just want to add a an amount up in these corners. Just a, just a dab. That corner and this corner. That should be good. And the crappy part about that is you don't really know if it's good until it starts leaking. Then you know it's not good. <clears throat> We're just referencing this gasket again with some bolts. Hey, the right size. Let's push 
push that in there like so. And we have these witness marks on the block as far as where it lines up at. And we want 18 foot pounds on the oil pan bolts. We'll go from center out. It's pretty crazy that I'm this far into this thing. When I was a teenager, now, I shouldn't even say a teenager. I think I was 21 or so. I had an 87 Firebird. And it had a leaky valve cover gasket. So I thought I was going to be Mr. Mechanic and fix my leaky valve cover gasket. I took the valve cover off and I dropped a nut down in the manifold and I knew I did it but I, I don't know I didn't care or something and uh, I started the engine after I replaced the valve, the gasket on the valve cover, I just left that nut off. And I started the engine and it made the worst noise ever until it just stopped running altogether. So when we had the engine rebuilt, I saw the carnage. It was a busted valve and a hole in the piston. And from that point on, I swore off doing any kind of automotive work. And here I am some 30 years later, all deep in this thing. So you can tell, I don't have much hope in the way of this thing running. But I'm having a good time, so that's all that matters. I think these front cover bolts are supposed to be 18 foot-pounds as well. I'll double check that before we really slap the love to them. These front cover bolts are 18 foot-pounds as well. And again, we're going to go center out. Should double check these without this extension on. Just in case. Let's take the extension off and see how close we are. Ah, oh, yeah. We're there. We're so there.
little peeling paint now that the bolts have dug in. Ah, right, well. There we go. Okay guys, next day here. I wrapped up yesterday after putting that front cover on. And I think I want to put the water pump on. I, I think that would be my next step. Those lifters are still soaking in oil. I don't think you can soak them too long, so we're just going to go for it. The <clears throat> water pump is the truck water pump. And I'm hoping that I can make this work. Another. While I'm waiting for paint to dry, I thought of a little side mission, so bear with me. Hey, it's my shop. I can do what I want. This concludes your side mission. Hey guys, I'd like to take this time while the paint's drying to remind you to become a member. <laughs> Just kidding. I would never do that shit. If I can't afford to pay for my own projects, I shouldn't be doing them. But I would appreciate a subscribe or a comment or even a like on this video. It'll help get this video out to more people. So now I'm gonna go back to watching paint dry and if that can hurry up, we'll get this water pump thrown on this 5.3. Incoming. Oh, that's really scary.
So I looked it up and it looked to me like water pump bolts were at 22 foot pounds with an 11 foot pound first pass and then 22 foot pounds. So I actually did an 18 foot pounds cause that's what I thought it was before I read it. So I did 18 and then finished it off at 22. But it should be okay. starting to look like an engine fellas I don't even know if I can use this stuff to be honest with you I'm just going for it we'll see what happens I've read and seen other videos some people say if you're doing a v6 to v8 or ls swap in a 90 to 96 to 2002 firebird or camaro that you can't use this stuff um but then other people have used this stuff so i'm just gonna see if everything lines up there's something to do with because the truck water pump sticks out this pulley sticks out so far but i'm planning on using the truck alternator and power steering and everything so i think it's all gonna line up but you do have to get uh, special brackets for the alternator at, which I have so I think I'm gonna move on to that see if I can get all that stuff to fit together so bear with me for a few minutes and I'll cut you back on and I'll let you know kind of where we go with that so I got this billet uh, lower mount alternator bracket I got my On the LS1, this bolt hole, this threaded hole right there on the block is already there because apparently it takes a different alternator that already uses this hole. If you have anything other than an LS1, you're not going to have this pre-drilled. Uh, with the LSX Innovations lower alternator mounting bracket, it comes with, or you can order it with, uh, there's another tube like this, but it's smaller and you're supposed to use like a, a size R drill bit. And what you do is you screw the bracket in on the bottom and pivot it out to line up with that so that that drill guide lines up just to the edge right here and you have to drill and tap that hole I got lucky because I have the LS1 obviously it's already got that hole get you set up here and we'll slap this alternator on real quick so bolts go through then the bracket then the standoffs and you just blap it on there and you'll obviously know that it's in there, right? Because your pulleys are going to line up. And 
and my pulleys appear to line up now since I got mine from Amazon and it's probably the Chinesium knockoff there's a bolt hole right here and there's one that's threaded into the block my assumption is that there's supposed to be another one of these billet standoffs and I was shorted one. I'm gonna have to come up with something I don't know if you could just order a billet tube or if I'm gonna have to come up with something else but I am short that but just for the sake of doing it I'm gonna put this alternator on and uh, I'll come back and finish that whenever I get the piece okay so <clears throat> I want to use power steering as well so also in this kit they provide a pulley and a long standoff with a longer bolt and that actually threads in right here at, so at the top hole of that bracket so we'll get that threaded in now I don't have the power steering bracket yet I'll get that I believe it mounts up here maybe on the head is what it looked like in the picture so it shouldn't be shouldn't be too bad once I get that to put it on so I can't get it on I need a I need a longer bolt than this one. This is the factory crank bolt. But I need to get a longer one and then I need to replace this one. But from what I'm seeing, once it gets pushed back in there, it should line up right here. Everything should everything should just line right up. So that's the ticket that's the that's the money right there she's a beaut i like it you guys like it i'm really kind of bummed out that i <clears throat> got gypped i got gypped out of that piece that billet piece goes right there but now I know what you're thinking you're thinking hey dumbass you put that bracket on wrong and to that I would say yeah I kind of did but there's a reason for it the reason is I'm using the truck water pump but I'm using the LS1 alternator relocation bracket so Bear with me for a second. If I was to put the bracket in front, like it actually shows, uh, if you watch any other videos of somebody using this, they it shows this bracket is here, especially if you go to like LSX Innovations. And then it shows this billet tube is the tube that goes from the block to the back side of the bracket right here. However, since I'm using the truck water pump, if I was to do that, I wouldn't be lined up, right? So my pulleys right now are in line. If I was to move this alternator, if I was to move this alternator back, I would no longer be in line. Did the manufacturer actually forget to include another billet standoff? 
yes and no. If you can configure this lower alternator relocation bracket in two different configurations, then yes, they should include another standoff for that third bolt hole. However, I don't know if that's the way it's actually designed and intended to be used, but I can't see a reason why it wouldn't function as designed that way. So, to that end, I went to Lowe's and I picked up another 10 by 1.50 uh, 60, you know, by 60 millimeters bolt and a half inch by like three feet aluminum tube. So I'm just gonna cut that down and put it in here. And I honestly think that this will function like this. That's gonna do it for this video. Made lots of headway coming together, looking like an engine. And I'm gonna cut on this video. And in the next video, we will put lifters in so i think we're gonna go lifters maybe lap the valves put the heads on we're just gonna start we're just gonna start cruising on this get this engine done put together and then i want to work on the harness and get it running on the stand here just to make sure before we plop it in the car so thank you guys for watching comment like subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. And I'm out.